Part four, chapter twenty five of Short History of the Christian Church by John Fletcher Hurst. This LibriVox recording is in the public domain. Chapter twenty five The Tractarian Movement in eighteen thirty three there began in the university of oxford an important revival of the high church tendencies of the church of england it arose out of a study of the early christian fathers and as a reaction against the spreading liberalism in the church and the nation in that year john henry newman published his arians in the fourth century his mind had become so deeply imbued with the spirit of antiquity that he was not able to reconcile the present condition of the church of england with the phenomena of the early times the passionate devotion of the saints and their strenuous advocacy of the faith he became more and more dissatisfied with the way matters were tending the previous year eighteen thirty two wren dixon hampton tutor in oriel college delivered the bampton lectures in which he laid himself open to the charge of arianism and in other particulars deeply offended the severe doctrinal strictness of newman and his coterie in spite of this hampton was chosen regius professor of divinity in eighteen thirty six liberalism was triumphing everywhere sir robert peel's bill for the emancipation of the catholics had become law in eighteen twenty nine a bill which was bitterly opposed by the evangelicals among the churchmen and dissenters and those of high church sympathies the whigs says newman had come into power lord grey had told the bishops to set their houses in order and some of the prelates had been insulted and threatened in the streets of london during this same eventful year eighteen thirty three a bill had passed the house suppressing ten of the irish bishoprics which was a terrible blow to those who believed in the divine order of the episcopate and its indefectible gifts the new bourbon charles x had fled from france before an uprising indignation and had taken refuge in england besides all this many of the english clergy were idle and careless and religion was on a decline to stem this tide newman and his companions began their work he was the leading spirit he was a man of earnest christian life of ascetic tendencies of profound knowledge of the human heart and of fascinating personal influence his preaching at st mary's so fresh so penetrating in its analysis of the soul and of all the subterfuges and hiding places of sin came as with a clarion voice to a dead church with him were associated john Kebble who became the singer of the movement whose christian year eighteen twenty seven was one of the heralds edward bovary pusey its theologian and leader after newman's defection richard hurrell frode the brother of the historian who probably would have gone with newman to rome but for his early death william palmer isaac williams and other devout and earnest men the principles of the movement were set forth in a series of pamphlets called tracts for the times published in oxford from eighteen thirty three to eighteen forty one chief of the ideas contended for was that of the church she is the means of salvation provided by christ the only dispenser of the means of grace perpetuated by apostolic succession and she is the eternal witness to the truth baptism regenerates the eucharist is the instrument of salvation and in the latter the bread and wine become in a spiritual manner the body and blood of christ because of the real presence of christ it is right to bow at the consecration of the elements for in so doing we worship not the elements but christ who is present in them the rule of faith is not scripture alone or tradition alone but scripture and tradition together a sharp line is drawn between clergy and laity as the former are in a unique manner the mediators between christ and the congregation the church of england is a part of the holy catholic church purer in her doctrines than the roman church but she needs to return to the catholic principles of her illustrious fathers beveridge bull cozen hooker andrews 
and carry those principles out consistently and thoroughly the oxford reformers made a deep impression on the english church church life was revived the services long neglected were attended once more special religious agencies for evangelization and instruction were set on foot and a new infusion of vitality made the church of england once more a power in the life of the nation there can be no doubt that the immense growth of the national church within the last fifty years has been due in large measure to the zeal and energy of the high church clergy the doctrines of the tractarians were also widely adopted and they are now the ruling tradition in the anglican church throughout the world on the other hand many of the brightest lights of the english church were impelled logically or illogically into the roman church before eighteen fifty three not less than four hundred clergymen and laymen had become roman catholics besides this drift to romanism the movement excited a reaction to the other extreme which resulted in landing the elder newman and the younger frude and many of the brightest minds of modern times on the shores of skepticism francis w newman and james anthony frude were profoundly influenced by the tractarian movement but the influence was towards an ineradicable prejudice for historic christianity they have labored as earnestly to pull down as their brothers did to build up this is one of the revenges of history end of chapter twenty five